Hi, I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Gig Harbor, Washington, where we are going to visit Toby Reed. Toby is a very well-respected sign painter, pinstriper, car restore, bicycle restore. If, if art is involved, Toby has a magic touch. I've known Toby for a long, long time. I met Toby in the seventh grade. So we go way back, and it was one of those things like one day I thought, how come I've never had Toby on the show? So you're about to meet him. Toby, come on in here. Hello, Lance. Hello there. Thank you for having uh, the, us here. And, well, thank uh, you for coming out. You bet. How did you end up out here in the Gig Harbor and kind of in the middle of the nowhere outside of Gig Harbor? Well, my wife lived in Olala, uh, which is not too far from Gig Harbor. Not everybody too many. that knows where Olala is, raise your hand. <laughs> Okay. Like four people out yeah. there. Anyway, got married and ended up here. Uh, Tacoma boy originally, of uh, course. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, Jason Lee and Stadium. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know it well. Well, you have a great big building over here that's full of all kinds of cool stuff. Can we take a look? Sure. All right, let's go. Okay. Well, Toby, I think I took note of you back in the seventh grade because you were really talented on drawn cars. And, I, of course, I've been a car guy since birth like you. And, and you did these incredible drawings that, you know, we were in the seventh grade and the work you were doing looked like a grown-up's work. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. how, how did you get started with all that? Probably just drawing World War II scenes in elementary school. But uh, in, in junior high, I just... Uh, thought, hey, cars are cool. And the older guys have cool cars. They got 49 Mercs and with Oldsmobile engines and whatnot. And uh, I thought at that time, everybody wanted to be popular or find a niche. And so that was my only plus was to do something and develop it to an extent. And I got some recognition for it. Your stuff was really sophisticated, I thought. I mean, it didn't look like little kids' drawings. It looked like this is, you know, a full-fledged artist <laughs> somewhere. And your stuff, way back then, ended up in, in a magazine or two, didn't it? Yeah, there's one I have over there called Custom Rodder. Ah. I think it was in 1960 or 61. Was that one of the little books? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And we used to open those and go right to the drawings right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're stuff seemed to, and I have some of it, but it seems to fall into two camps. It was kind of uh, either current hot rods at that time uh, or a little bit of custom work on uh, hot rods at that time or stuff that was like concept cars or futuristic cars, which the amazing thing was is the cars you were drawing and the seventh grade is what all the cars look like about the time we graduated from high school. I know one that I have looks just like an AMX, and it was long before anybody probably thought of the AMX. I remember seeing that recently, you showed it to me, and I thought, yeah, there is quite a similarity there. Well, yeah. What was the inspiration? How did, you, how did you know that? I didn't know. You know, I just was trying to do something a little different, and uh, just sit down and start scribbling, come up with little ideas. I still do that occasionally, you know. Something will pop into my head, like I'll look at some new SUV and think that thing is so ugly. You know, they're, they're having an ugly contest to see who can design the ugliest car in the world. And, uh, but, you know, styling has changed so much that uh, there's people, or people like uh, Keith Coucher, and I just drooled over his stuff, I thought. If I'd stuck with it, maybe I could be doing like he does, a caliber of work like that, but uh, not so. You know, I took a different direction and uh, didn't really have the brains to get to the art center school or into industrial design. You know I did it in math in school. Yeah. <laughs> Toby and I failed some of the same classes. In fact, we, we did it together, I think, on a, a couple of classes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, back in the old days, back in the school days, you would always be the guy that, uh, well, we need, we need a cover for the yearbook, or we need a dance poster, or we need something, and, well, let's get Toby. And you just became the, the resident artist for junior high and high school. Pretty much, yeah. yeah and did that, you, you talked about the popularity thing. Was that, I mean, you know, do you have girls knocking on your door because you were a good artist or anything, or, or it just, uh, a, a lot of people just appreciated mm. your work and, and that opened the door to be friends with them. I think 
that was it. Some girls would say, would you draw me a bouquet of flowers or something? You, know, you couldn't say, afford to buy a bouquet. Yeah. So you... I'd say maybe a bud vase in the yeah. back of an old car. Uh, but, you know. uh, and uh, it, you drew those little ferns, those little cartoon characters that mysteriously started popping up everywhere. I, I think like on walls and, and uh, all kinds of crazy places. Mm -hmm. And where did you come up with those? Uh, my buddy at the time, Tom Taylor and I, we started a thing in high school as just a joke called Reed Taylor Sign Company. And we came up with that. I think Tom did, or had something to do with that. And there was a guy named Terry Flippin. And Terry, I think I kind of stole the idea from Terry. But there's still uh, some of those little ferns around here. Uh -huh. You've always been a car guy, and you know your drawings illustrate how uh, you appreciated cars. What, what do you think of, of uh, and this is a, a big question because it's been so many years, but the cars that were cool back then, a lot of them, if, if you, you know, drove them out of, of 1962 and drove them into 2011 or 2012, they'd be just as cool now as back then. Mm -hmm. And your drawing <coughs> seemed to recognize that. A, the, the, a lot of the stuff that you did is, is the same way. It looked good then, and it, it doesn't look stupid now. It looks cool now. What do you, what do you think it is about why, why that style hung around where some of the stuff just looks ridiculous now. It was just, uh, I think, computers, I think, kind of put the end to some really creative automobile styling, wow. you know, the computer age. Uh, that's my thought. Uh, of course, you could probably design a beautiful functional car with a computer now, but it's more on function now, I think, and aerodynamics, uh, gas mileage. Things like that. So back, that. Back then, we didn't worry about it if you had a big box plowing through the wind, because uh -huh. gas was only 37 cents a gallon or less. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I owned a few of those boxes that yeah. plowed through the air. <laughs> many ramblers, many, many ramblers in my past. Um, and then uh, the sign painting itself, you've done, uh, you know, there's all kinds of restaurants and taverns and businesses and cars and stuff that you've done over the years. And some of the um, automotive related sign work that you have done is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, just absolutely beautiful. How, you know, you've done a Chrysler. Uh, I'm just right behind us here. We've got a Dodge and a Buick and a Studebaker and, and uh, a Chrysler. And, and how is it that you have such a, a good knack for capturing what they looked like back then and reproducing them. And, and I think the Chrysler one actually looks better than the original Chrysler sign. Yeah, that, there's more to that than the others. Uh, the others are just kind of cloned from existing signs. I thought when a porcelain steel one costs seven or 800 bucks. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, I'll make my own yeah. for a, you know maybe $20 in the materials. Yeah, and, yeah it, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah. And then your, your car thing, you are one of the first, uh, of my crowd, everybody wanted a, a Ford, our crowd, everybody wanted a Ford and a Chev, and, and there are a couple of odd ducks around like you and I, and, and you, you're a Mopar guy, and, and the old uh, fat fender kind of stuff, you've got a, was this a 47 Chrysler right here? 47, yep, same age as I. Ah, <laughs> and then the uh, the one out that's uh, slowly becoming one with the uh, environment. <laughs> with the there. elements. Yeah, yes. what year is that one? That's a 46 DeSoto. 46 DeSoto. How, how is it that you grew to, to love what I think the car community is beginning to enjoy now, but in the past they were kind of untouchable? Or, or people, you know, everybody wanted a, a Ford or a Chev from the 50s. Nobody mm -hmm. wanted a 47 Chrysler. Mm -hmm. What happened? Because you're not alone in this. This is something that seems to be happening in the, in the hobby. The, these, these cars that were not wanted are very much wanted now. Yeah, I've noticed that recently. It's a, they're just kind of sleepers for years and years and not too much value to them. And being a sign painter, you know, I knew I was never going to get rich or be able to afford a 59 Cadillac convertible, something like that. And these were available quite a few years ago for not that much. My wife paid $150 for that in 1969, and it was in primo condition. Ah. But uh, those were the days. 
and uh, I had a 51 Chev Tin Woody wagon. You uh -huh. remember that? I do. You painted it with spray can. Yep, and it yeah. came out very nice, which, yeah. which was really strange. Yeah. That uh, rattle can paint job. Yep. Just go to the hardware store, get get the rattle cans, and it was gorgeous. You did a beautiful, beautiful job. Orlac paint. It was called from Payless Drug Stores. Uh -huh. How many cans <laughs> did you use on the car? Jeez, I don't know. I bought about three cases. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, it was so old gold, cans. old gold and antique ivory. I remember uh, the colors, yeah. And it was lacquer, so you know, I'd hit one fender a night after work or something, and then hand rub it out, and it looked darn good for yeah. what it was. Everybody was amazed. Yeah. They couldn't believe it came out of a rattle can. Yeah. Uh, but now, um, along with your love of, of Chrysler's. And, and you know, fat fender Chrysler's, and now <laughs> that they're getting popular, you also have had an appreciation for originality and, and you know, the barn find that doesn't get restored, the, the mm -hmm. car that just gets cleaned up real nice. Yeah. What do you think about that trend in, in the hobby? Just keeping them stock? Yeah. I appreciate a stock car, you know, because, you know, I like customs and rods too. But a stock car, I think, takes a lot more research, uh, trying to get parts for it. You know, there, there's more involved there. Mm -hmm. And uh, cost-wise, you know, I could take this and probably, if the engine wasn't running, I know it will. Uh, but if it wasn't, if it needed an engine, it'd probably be a lot less expensive to dump a Chevy 350, 350, and a Ford 9-inch in it. Right. And then I'd have a good, dependable cruiser. But uh, I just kind of always did like stock, you know, vehicles mm -hmm. the way they were. I also appreciate the uh, customs immensely, especially that you know, the, some radical customs just blow my socks off. I just go, wow, that's uh -huh. beautiful. The the, the era, and it, it'll it's still here and it'll never go away. But where in the past everybody wanted to put the most fantastic paint job on a car that they possibly could afford. Mm -hmm. And those paint jobs, you know, it's not unusual to hear people paying twenty to forty thousand dollars for some incredible paint job. Mm -hmm. Now uh, a lot of people are saying pull it out of the barn, clean it up as best you can, uh, bring the paint back to life as much as you can, but leave it alone. So what do you think about that? Fine. Yeah. Whatever suits you, you know? I'm pretty Liberally, you know, I'm not going to put somebody down for putting 50,000 bucks into a show-winning paint job and having a trailer queen, but I'm just not that kind of guy. I'm, you know, I, I like to use things. Uh -huh. Well, another thing that you like to use that also seems to be creeping up in the, the car hobby are old bicycles. Yeah. And I see we have, uh, we've got five of them sitting here, and, and we have a restored Schwinn, and looks like a, an original Schwinn, and, and, and some pretty cool stuff. Um, how'd you get into bicycles? Just an ad in the paper. No, actually, it was a, a barn sale, not a barn sale, a, gr a garage sale on Fox Island. Now he's over there, and here's this old Schwinn. That's the black Schwinn Tiger. Tiger, there. uh huh. And uh, I said, what do you want for that thing? The tires were flat, but I saw the paint was kind of iffy. And the guy says, want 20 bucks? I says, I got five. <laughs> and he says, OK. Yeah. So he sold you his $100 bicycle for five bucks? Yeah, that was years ago, oh, probably okay. about 1989. OK, okay. so and back when they were just a bunch of old bicycles. Yeah. And I stripped that thing down to metal, and, but I did save the checkerboard and the original Schwinn decal on there and uh, repainted it and uh, re-lettered it. And it's been around. I rode that around at the Portland Swap Meet about 20 years ago, and uh, I won't get into that story. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Toby, we have uh, an example of some of your pinstriping here, and uh, there, there is an example of Pinstriping has been popular forever, and when we were back in school, we paid attention to it. And there are lots of guys out there now that you know Bob Davidson and and some of the other people that are are just considered really good pinstripers. Mm -hmm. uh, who do you look up to in that field, and why do you think pinstriping is just keeps staying around, being popular? Well, some of the people, well, we grew up with uh, Gary Ebert. He's still around in Port Orchard, and Gary's just a master. Uh, he was doing cars for guys in high school, I think, when we were 
going to stadium right. and whatnot. Uh, and there's John Hanukin down in uh, Tumwater. John who's, painted a beautiful vintage vehicle sign okay. for me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you know his talents. That guy is just overflowing with talent, uh -huh. watercolors, whatnot. Uh, other pinstripers, of course, Bob Davidson. Uh, there's quite a few around the Northwest that are just really good. I used to do it on occasion, so I never got that good at it, never accomplished it, but it was passable. And I think it was after I saw the Bob Davidson show that you did, I thought, I think I'll get out those brushes and see what happens because it's been about 10 years. So Bob inspired you. Yeah. Wow. And I realized how rusty I was, and what am I going to do, you know, not my car or anything, so uh, I used this old, well, fairly new toilet seat, and that took forever. Uh -huh. I kept making mistakes, rubbing it off, and, you know, just trying to get it balanced. There's still I, so many imperfections when I look at it, but, you know, most people are going to look at it and think, yeah, well, that balances, and as far as the color choice goes, that's another thing, you know. But uh, that's just a whole different uh, aspect of lettering and brushing. And most sign painters can pinstripe fairly well. Uh, it's part of, like, this Katie Down sign. There's pinstriping there. But I used it along with the uh, lettering. So the whole thing together, you know, if it wasn't perfect, one thing kind of complemented the other in a way and took the eye away from imperfections. But, you know, I, I'm a perfectionist in some ways and uh, maybe sometimes too self-critical, which is, can be one's worst enemy. <laughs> well, pinstriping has maintained its popularity. It was, it was oh, yeah. when we were kids, it's popular now, and some cars it, it doesn't belong on, and some cars it uh, looks perfect on. And, you have some cars here. None of them are, are pristine show cars, no. but they're kind of fun. So let's take a closer look at those. Okay. All right. 47 Chrysler. You say Kathy bought this, or you bought it for Kathy, your wife, and, and when? 1969. Okay. It was right. about this month in 69, right. I think. 150 it was. bucks. 150. Her dad went with her to look at it, and he said the, the guy wanted 200 for it. He says, that car needs tires. That's 50 bucks more to get four recaps, you know, so. Recaps. Wow. Yeah. So she, she offered him 150 and he took it. And uh, the guy died the next day. But uh, <laughs> if you'd have given 200 bucks, he'd probably still be alive. Maybe. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've got it in the garage here, in the studio. What's the plans? What are you going to do to it? The plans right now, it's been sitting for 32 years. I believe, up in our garage. And to the delight of my wife, I got it down here last week. And uh, she doesn't really care about the car anymore, but uh, the plans are get it running and mechanically sound as a driver and uh, just kind of take it from there. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be a show car, but it, in its prime, when it was all shiny, it was a, it was a beautiful car. Mm -hmm. you know? The only thing it lacked was the wood. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, that would make the value be uh, yeah. a little bit higher. I know yeah. you have a Steeds uh, plaque resting in the window there. Uh, Toby and I are both member of the Steeds Car Club, a club that started back in 1962 and, and uh, was around into the 80s and then uh, drifted away and now it's back together and about 30 members in it. It's going strong. It is. Um, what do you think about the car club scene in the Northwest? The car club scene, from what I see, is pretty darn strong, mm -hmm. you know, especially for the older guys, but there's a lot of younger people, I think, that yeah. are getting into it now, too, and it's good to see, uh, especially at this age in life, uh, thinking, well, that was big back in the 60s and into the 70s, and then it seems it just kind of faded out for years, and now there's a, a resurgence or whatever the word would be to... We're all teenagers again. Yeah, we think we yeah. are. Yeah, well. Give me a shot of testosterone. Yeah, and I'll yeah. Show you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a couple of interesting cars outside where we started. Let's go take a look at those. Okay. All right.
another car in your 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 vast fleet here mm -hmm. 73 cadillac uh interesting in that these two-door uh coupe de villes and and whatever cadillacs from the the 70s seem to be kind of well from about 66 to 75 seem to be finding favor with a custom crowd yeah what's the appeal do you think well to me, it's just the ride. It's like driving a couch down the highway. Yeah, it's just smooth and uh, it does perform fairly well. It's got a little 472 cubic inch engine in it, which gets Whoa. it around. Yeah. yeah, that's the small block. The big block is 500. Holy cow. <laughs> but those went in El Dorados. But some of these did have 500s. It was an option. But uh, and the price, you know, when I got this, it was about, oh, probably 14 years, 13 years ago. It was on the side of the road down here, a Palm Springs car for sale. And uh, I offered them a thousand for it and they hemmed and hawed and said, okay. And I've had it ever since. And uh, it, it's in need of a paint job probably. And some, a few other odds and ends, but it's a, it's a good runner and uh, still looks pretty good. It's the last year of the true two-door hardtop Coupe de Ville. Uh -huh. I think the rat rod community, one of the things that they've mm -hmm. brought to the hobby is a, a acceptance of getting something like this, just cleaning the thing up and driving it, just mm -hmm. having a good time with yeah. it. And uh, I, I think it's a real good thing for the hobby, especially when, uh, you know, you, seems like these days about 15 grand is the entry level for just an average kind of yeah. car yeah. Uh, and so you can pick up one of these out there for five six seven thousand dollars or less enough, or yeah. less yeah you're in, in great shape yeah his offering or had it for sale for 1800 last year and couldn't get rid of it uh, you know so but they're, they're i think they are becoming more in demand I have had thoughts of dropping it about three inches all around and putting lake pipes on it. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, speaking of, of dropping down, that uh, DeSoto that we were standing next to at the opening of the show, it looks like it's slowly sinking into the earth. Let's, uh, let's yeah. take a, a, a good, respectful look at that uh, old I, sweetheart. I think I heard chunks of rust hitting the ground. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Toby, we're back out where we started. Uh, 46 DeSoto sitting here. That looks like it's slowly sinking into Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's going on with this car? I saved this as a parts car. I had a bunch of cars back in here that I got rid of uh, a few years ago. But I saved this for a parts car for the 47 Chrysler inside there. A lot of interchangeable parts. It uh, was at one time restorable, but not now within reason, and uh, I'm going to use parts from this on the Chrysler. And I see on the side it says a official 1946 Indy Pace car. I, I think that's a, a figment of your imagination. Yeah, that's a joke. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think DeSoto ever made it to Indy, but uh, 
a lot of people have noticed that and said, is that really, was that really a pace car back? <clears throat> the people that say, how much is a sign, you know? So uh, yeah. they ask questions like yeah. that. And, and the tree growing up here, I, I have a hunch that in uh, 20 to 40 years, this, this car will be 20 to 40 feet off the ground. Well, I doubt if I'll be here to see it, but that would be cool. Well, 20 you'll be here, maybe 30, maybe even 40. So. We hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Toby, thank you very much for letting us come out here and see your studio and learn a little bit more about your background. Um, and uh, thanks for being what I consider a real asset to the car scene in the Northwest. Thank you. All right. And thank you very much for watching the show. We wouldn't have a show if you weren't watching, so thanks again, and we'll see you again next time. Till then, bye-bye.